Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Time to work on the old Chevy. My temper has dropped since the last time I drove this thing, which has been a couple of months ago. And uh, it's time to find out what happened to it. Hopefully it starts. Let me show you what all this thing has to offer. Looking for the wasps. Uh, let me give you a shot of the interior in this thing. So absolutely nothing works in this truck other than the temperature gauge. Dash for a 1985 is really not all that bad. It is cracked, but like they all are. Typical old farm truck. Let's see if, uh, if she'll start. Uh, just barely. I think she got a flat tire. Definitely flat. Need to get some air for that. So just to catch you up to speed on what's going on with this truck is that right now it's in four wheel drive so it pulled itself with the front end up here because the last time I drove it there was a pretty loud pop in the rear end because the brakes were holding on this thing and stuff happened. So <laughs> let me show you what's not supposed to happen and uh, we'll get into tearing into this thing and see what what was the weak link? So see that drive shaft spinning with both back wheels on the ground? It's not supposed to do that.
so let's uh, so let's pull the diff cover off this thing and <laughs> see what surprises are behind that. Wow, that spring is not supposed to be like that. healthy <laughs> huh there's a metal in there I know. Oh, who knows <laughs> what happened to this thing Is that oil that smell Yep, that's gear oil. It stinks. So the ring and pinion in this don't look bad, nor does the diff really. I mean, typical wear. Now, I put a ring and pinion in this years ago when I got the truck, uh, and uh, I never put a diff in it. It was okay, but turning the drive shaft, you know, I can see all the diff gears, and they're good. Hey, Kane, will you turn that, uh, turn that uh, axle there? So diff looks good nothing wrong with that the problem is nothing's turning on this side over here so i'm almost certain that this axle in this side is busted so i'm pulling out the bolt that holds the retaining pin that holds my diff gears in so i can remove those and pull the keepers off that hold the axles in wear on it. All this stuff we've cleaned back up before it gets reinstalled. have damaged this diff gear as well. I'm not for sure. So not a ton of backlash in the ring and pinion. I put this in it when I got the truck. It was war the pinion bearings were wore completely out of this thing. So I put pinion bearings in it, ring and pinion, carrier bearings, uh, outer uh, axle bearings as well. All that uh, not terribly old. You know, not new anymore. It's been in there and pulled many loads. So the rear end in this truck is a GM 8.5 10 bolt. They were never good. They were never good to begin with. <laughs> fine for your everyday driver, not fine for anything, you know, above 300 horsepower. Um, that's an assumption. They just didn't hold up well. They're pretty light duty. Let's pull this axle out here and see what I've already know and that this axle is busted but let's get a look at it and see uh, see where it did twist right where they always twist right at the end of the uh, diff gear twisted right into so a magnet to run up in here pull out any chunks we'll run some rags through this to clean out these tubes real well I'm going to change these seals anyway, but we need to pull out that chunk of axle. And there is the other piece. So 
So what did we learn here? I learned that you can hold this truck to the floor indefinitely and the motor won't blow up. I also learned that the rear end has, a quite, has quite a bit of wear in it. I also learned, which I have learned in the past many times, that it's not a good idea to abuse your stuff because you're angry at it. All you end up doing is breaking worse what's already broken and aggravating you and causing yourself more work. So learn from me and don't do that because it's not a good idea. You pay for it. Twenty-eight. That was it. Yeah. Twenty-eight spline. What's overall length? Yeah, thirty-one. Yeah, okay, that's it. So I got a couple really nice viewer gifts here. These are from my buddy Ron White, longtime friend of the channel. He's the gentleman that actually sent me the Gershner toolbox not too awful long ago. So sent me a couple of the fireball tool squares these are the cast iron squares really nice i did not have a set of these we do have some at work both the standard square like this and then the monster square version ours at work are aluminum but uh, these are cast iron which a little more durable you know, they won't beat up quite as bad so really nice well made a lot of cast iron in them and these are clearance holes for clamps so if you're clamping your, to your work to this square for fabrication, you know, really nice design. They also come, each one comes with a hardware kit that consists of thumb screws and then some, uh, what looks like a 3 16th or something plate. Maybe that's quarter, no. That you can put to the sides of these where these bolt holes are and uh, you can use that as a reference point for your work. So threaded all the way through, so you can use these on either side of the square. So, really nice. So, thank you, Ron, appreciate that. These are awesome. Oh, we got a we got a jealous dog. But Bubba does not want you petting Itzy. She's really trying to kill you, Bobby. Get a ball. She's old and grumpy. <laughs> and she's like a, on an air hockey table with her skin. <laughs> she's like, please pet me more.
So over the last day and a half, I've been giving this old truck a lot of thought. Before parts that I ordered come in, what do I want to do to, to get this thing back up into you know, working condition? And what I've decided is that I'm only going to replace the things that have to be replaced on it, and I'm not going to mess with anything that works. For one, I can justify replacing everything on that truck. Leaf springs, drums, brake shoes, brake hardware, axle bearings, diff bearings, probably diff and ring and pinion. It just never ends. Wheel cylinders. And you can't just replace the wheel cylinders on a truck that old with uh, the amount of rust that it has on it. You have to replace the brake lines as well, or at least a section of them. And then you find more problems that would not have existed had you not stuck your thumb in there and started trying to fix stuff. So sometimes it's best to leave things that work alone. I have found that over the years. So what I've decided to do is only replace the things that have to be replaced because even though individual components for that truck are relatively affordable, by the time you buy every component for that truck, it starts to get relatively expensive. And I don't feel like going down that path right now. I can't, I cannot. So what I've decided to do, turn these drums, everything that's usable is gonna get used and just get it back up into shape where it works and we'll haul firewood because that's what it does. So I've got one of the drums in the lathe. Let's see if we can't touch those up. There's still enough meat on those to where we can dress them up a bit and then, uh, you know, you'll see the rest of my plan as we go. So let's get started on this. So I believe these are 11 and a quarter inch drums and all I'm going to do is try to remove the uh, raised lips there to where they'll slide on and off uh, easily and get this thing back around if it is indeed out around. Now my dad has a drum turning lathe at his place and I can remember that thing. I can remember hearing these drums turning just day after day, endless when I was a kid. So it's kind of a uh, very familiar sound. Now, this will probably get pretty harmonic, so I'll probably have to shove some rubber in between the, the drum and the uh, chuck. But I have done this before successfully. So let's dress this thing up and uh, see if we can't uh, get it all clean, ready to use again. So there's a look at the tool that we're going to use. Just a pretty heavy three quarter inch boring bar and these are carbide triangular inserts that go in here and you can just touch those up when they get dull and move them forward. I like uh, this bar design. So we'll be using that. Hopefully this won't sing too bad but I guess we'll find out. So I think we're all set up to give this a try. I stuck some rubber conveyor belt chunks in between the uh, body of the drum and the chuck to maybe try to absorb some of that vibration. We're gonna be running 27 RPM to start out. We'll see how well that works. So let's touch off and see if we can't clean this thing up.
right, I think one more, one more pass will do it. Got a little area back in the back that didn't clean up. Really, these would be fine, but we'll clean it up. One more pass. Finish is good. As good as it was new, or better. one. So these are not stuck in there hard. I didn't want to influence you know, the, I didn't want to influence the rotor too much by putting too much pressure on it and making it non-concentric with the bore. Just measuring up these drums, making sure that they are still above the minimum requirement. And they are, but not by much, by about 15 or 20 thousandths of an inch. That's still perfectly fine, they're structurally sound, but they won't be able to be turned again. So once I use them this time, you know, they'll go to the recycler after that. Because you don't want to run them too thin. But you should get all the life out of them you can. And, and usually in your daily driver cars, smaller stuff, most of the time it makes more financial sense to just replace them with new, be done with it, than to have them turned. That used to not be the case, and it's still not like that in the big truck world because those drums are so large and expensive. But with these daily driver um, drums, you can get them pretty cheap. I forget what these are, like $25 a piece or something like that new. It doesn't make a lot of sense to spend you know, 20 minutes or 30 minutes resurfacing one. You get the idea. Using this really nice sheer Timoco bore gauge, I think it goes up to 36 inches, which would be tough to measure a bore of that size because you have to be on in two axis just right to get a good repeatable measurement. But it is nice to be able to measure a bore of that size. So there we go. Nice and uh, refreshed. They don't look like new, but they should work as good as they ever would. The only thing that's good in it is a ring and pinion and the, uh, and they're not perfect, but they're usable. The ring and pinion, the carrier, holds the diff gears and the housing and the diff cover. That's good. Bearings in the ends for the axles are not all that old either. I replaced those and, this, and it would need seals as well if you were going to replace it all. But this axle seals that go at the end here to keep that gear oil into the, in the housing. I think the one on the passenger side is slightly leaking, either that or the wheel cylinder. One of these things is not like the others. One of these things just doesn't belong. Can you tell which thing is not like the others by the time we finish this song? Do you know which one is different? So a lot of obvious wear on actually both of these. So I'm going to replace both axles. There's going to be ma matching wear inside of the uh, inside of the diffs, but the gear teeth. I mean, they're really not excessively worn, although they're worn as well, because why wouldn't they be everything else on that truck is? So chances are 
unless things change, I'm just going to replace the axles and let all the other stuff ride because it never ends otherwise. Lots of metal there in the, uh, in the rear end. There's a magnet that I put in there when I uh, put the ring and pinion in there years ago. So it's a uh, hard drive magnet, done its job. So I was really hoping to finish my truck up this week, but parts are taking forever to get in. They're finally starting to show up, so hopefully next week we'll get that thing back together and I'll be able to use it to haul some of the wood and stuff that I have down, firewood, for this winter because the leaves and stuff are definitely falling and it won't be long. We're getting 45 degrees Fahrenheit at night here, which is relatively cool considering you know how warm it has been, so it won't be long and we will be into winter. So I need to get all my wood you know, stacked up and in place because that's what we heat with primarily in the house. And now that I've got the wood stove in the shop, that's what I'm gonna be using there. So I need to get that sorted. And preferably you wanna do that while the weather's decent. So that's one of the main reasons to fix my truck. There's a shot of me cleaning the roof of the shop with all the leaves, new leaves that are falling, clogging up the gutters. And if you still clean your gutters out by hand, uh, the leaf blower, much, much easier. Got to get everything sorted, and it seems like it all comes at once. Summer goes fast. While editing this video, my wife called me, and she had her own vehicle issue that I'll share with you as well. It's already an automotive video, so why not just double down, show you what I've had to deal with this week. So the joy of owning old vehicles never really ends. I'm on a rescue mission at the moment. My wife was taking my daughter and son to school, and uh, she's broken down. So she says the driver side wheel is hanging off the car, basically. Something like that. We'll see when we get there. Hopefully it's something we can fix in the parking lot. I've got quite a bit of tools with me, but we'll see. You never know. There she is. So, so what happened? <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah. That's that lower control arm. Alright. I think that's what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. Can you see it? Yeah. It's a lower ball joint. Hopefully we can fix it here. Ah. Uh -huh. 
So one thing that I think that every tradesman or mechanic needs is a good tool bucket. You know, this was spur of the moment. My wife called me. I was sitting here editing, actually, this video here. Said, hey, we got a problem. My wheel's hanging off. And, you know, I dropped everything I was doing, grabbed the tool bucket, which every good tradesman needs, filled it up with the majority of tools that I thought that I would need, you know, not even knowing for sure what job I was going to do. But couple rails of sockets, some long breaker bars because all this stuff is frozen. This happens to be a five dollar breaker bar from uh, Harbor Freight and I'll say from doing this one job here it was worth every penny that I paid for it because otherwise I would not have been able to get this bolt loose without this long bar because it was crazy tight. And I even bent the bar uh, you know getting it loose. But Like I said get you a good tool bucket throw everything that you think you'll need in it, although you will never have everything you need. If you're crafty, you'll be able to improvise, and it may get you out of a tough spot. So if you're just now building a toolkit, I mean, if, and you can afford to buy the best tools that money can buy, by all means, do that. But it's not necessary to have, you know, all snap-on tools to do a repair job like this and get yourself out of a really bad situation. I saved, by eliminating a tow bill and a repair bill on this, this job right here, enough to probably buy, I don't know, at least half the stuff that I brought in this bucket. So one job can justify your purchase when it comes to tools anyway. And all my stuff is medium of the road, medium, right? Middle of the road. Not the best you can buy, but not garbage either. I think the majority of my stuff is made by Gear Wrench, which is perfectly fine for the majority of jobs. I don't run a everyday automotive repair place, so you know for me, it's it's what works, and probably for the majority of you, it would work as well. So invest in a good toolkit. More tools is better than <laughs> more middle of the road quality tools is far better than a handful of very expensive tools that. Not enough to do much with, right? Who wants to spend $30,000 in their toolbox? You know, who can, really? So this failure is no surprise to me. I already knew that this ball joint was bad, actually. But I checked it not too awful long ago, and it really didn't feel all that loose. Obviously, it was worse than I thought that it was. But luckily, this part was sitting in the shop, so I didn't have to order anything. I already had done it basically parts on the shelf which is rare but uh, you know I had it so that was a bonus and I brought it along with me not knowing for sure that this was what it was but when my wife said that the wheel was hanging off I mean there's very few things that can make that happen uh, don't have other a swivel. Than the bad ball joints got lucky on this one and had the parts to get us back on the road That spray reminds me of like pine salt. <laughs> yeah, it does smell kind of like pine salt, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> when you do a mobile repair like this, you just hope that you get all the <laughs> tools that you need. Nine times out of ten, you don't. But usually, if you're resourceful, you can make do. Sometimes you can't. I think we got this one going in the right direction. So just got to go to the neck of it. Where's those new... I don't think you have a bottom over here. Huh? 
I never seen you brought them over. Yeah. Oh, here they are. So I guess that's it, all we got time for this week. Hopefully your week was cheaper and less catastrophic than mine. Um, got both my axles in, which is good. They took longer to show up than what I thought. I was hoping to finish that truck up this week, but you know, that's just the way it goes. I did decide to go ahead and put differential gears in it and wheel seals along with obviously the back brake pads and turn, turn the drums. Thankfully her car uh, did not come apart you know, while she was driving it. Luckily it popped loose at the gas station, which is about the best place that it could possibly have happened. So we got really lucky on that. And we had the parts to fix it. It went well. So <laughs> That's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped us out whatsoever. Much appreciated. So that's it. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you wanna scream. Since the day you're born, you're just a flower. Gotta be